So the post-2015 climate agenda is about building the world economy over the next 15 years. And it goes beyond climate, it goes into how we build the cities that we want to see, how we build the energy systems, how we finance land use in a different way. The post-2015 agenda is a climate agenda and it's a sustainable development agenda and we need to bring the two together. So that's observation number one. Second, um, the, the quantity of finance that people talk about right, is, is well within the capacity of global capital markets and global fin financing flows to deliver. We have a world economy that's 80 trillion, 90 trillion dollars a year today, and we're talking about investments in the, in the range of six trillion dollars to actually build those cities, build the energy systems, and create the economy that we want to see. So, um, the real issue, right, is not actually the quantity of finance, however big those numbers sound. The world economy already invests well over $15 trillion a year in all forms of different assets. The real questions are about the quality of finance. Um, and what we need is we need long-term capital. We need it to be at the right price. Right? And in particular, we need to make sure that the pricing is right for sustainable infrastructure, for the low carbon, resilient infrastructure we need to see. Right? We need to see it with the right risk structure. Um, and we need to see it essentially supported and enabled by the right policy settings of which getting carbon prices right is not the only piece, but it's in many respects an essential piece of the toolkit uh, to, to create an environment within which we can get not just the right quantity of finance, but we can get the right quality of finance as well. There's a clear, I think, opportunity for investing in the kind of low carbon infrastructure that we need to see around the world. Um, and it's for many developing countries, particularly the poorest developing countries, um, they will need um, support externally in terms of increased financing flows to make sure that that capital and that infrastructure is put in place. Um, I know a lot of people want to focus on the conflict um, and my view is that you know, when we get some of the right policies in place, um, there will be an opportunity to invest in those assets in developing countries, right? and in, in a way that will be both good for the economic growth of those countries and good for investor returns. And yes, I think that we need to see you know, public finance put in there from the developed world, but let me just remind you that with however big the public finance flows from the developed world will be, they will be a fraction right, of what will actually be needed. Right? So I'm all for making sure that there is sufficient support from the developed world, but let's recognize that we will need 30 times more capital than that right, to flow into investments in the developing world, and that will have to come both from domestic sources of capital and from the private sector, and that will only happen with the right policies. What I've seen at this COP in, in Paris, more than at any previous COP, is two things. One is there's a deep engagement um, by countries from across the world, both developed and developing. Um, and so there is a sense now that, that you know, the transition to a low carbon economy represents a path to better economic growth for low, middle, and high-income countries. And I see a degree of engagement by the private sector, by business, that you've never seen before. And both of those are a tremendous source of encouragement.